Hey guys, welcome to the second episode of Connecting the Dots, the podcast where we follow the breadcrumbs and try to predict where disruptions will take us. If you haven't done that already, please subscribe to the channel and smash that like button to support it. Now let's buckle up and get ready. I promise you it won't be boring. In this episode, we'll discuss a battery day secret that I first uncovered a year ago and fully developed two months ago, but kept shut about it till now. Once I realized the importance of this secret, I wanted to tell it right away, thinking maybe it would help some people. But then again, it was so big that leaking it ahead of time would have hurt Tesla, which went to great lengths to hide it. Not wanting to get in the way of Tesla's mission, I tried getting in touch with people in Elon's close circles and asked whether spilling it was fair game, or maybe it's better that I keep my thoughts to myself. Since no answer was received, I let my conscience win, and from then on, I shut up and kept it to myself. But guess what, guys? Battery day is near, and it's okay talking about it now, so, drumroll please, Tesla's best kept battery secret is not so fast. Don't worry, I won't keep you waiting for long, but after all this buildup, I need to bring us down to earth and give some perspective. Although what I'll show is interesting, it is far from being battery day's highlight. In this video, I'll assume you already know what highlights are expected, so if you don't and want to learn about the really important stuff, I recommend watching The Limiting Factors Excellent Analysis. I'll put a link in the description below. So, if not a highlight, why do I say it's so interesting? Because just like the Roadster reveal in the Tesla Semi event, my moonshot is the one more thing. On battery day, Tesla will reveal a completely new car that will dominate the competition and bring billions of dollars to Tesla's balance sheet. Yep, that's it. That's the secret, and it will bring billions. Let's start going through how I developed this idea and see if it makes sense to you too. Or maybe I'm just imagining things. This happens too sometimes, but in this case, I'm very sure I'm right because new data that arrived seems to validate my thoughts. It all started almost a year ago when test mules for the Plaid Model S started zooming around the Nürburgring and unofficially beating the Porsche Taycan's lap record. As an automotive enthusiast, as well as a Tesla fan, I found this really exciting. But then the thoughts came. Wait, there's a problem. There's no way that the current battery will support this performance with accepted safety and longevity. Okay, so the obvious conclusion is that a new battery pack will be needed with new battery cells and a much larger maximum discharge rate. Everybody speculated that Tesla will someday start making its own batteries, but nobody knew when. This was the first clue. Plaid mode should use a new battery pack. This was later confirmed when news broke about Project Roadrunner. Anyway, another question followed. If the Plaid uses a new battery pack, there is no way that a company as obsessed with efficiency as Tesla will use two completely different packs on the same production line. They go as far as to fit heated seats and FSD computers to Model 3 buyers who didn't order them at all. So two battery packs for the same car is clearly a no-go. So, if the Plaid must use a new battery pack, and only one pack design can be used in a production line, the conclusion is that they either open a separate production line for the Plaid version alone, which I find highly unlikely, or, more likely, they'll have only one line and all Model S versions will get the new pack, just with different capacities. So, we have a new pack used on all versions, but the pack is the most expensive part of the car. It would be dumb to constraint Tesla's newest state-of-the-art pack with the dimensions, mechanical and electrical connections, etc. of the oldest pack currently available. A clean sheet design without these constraints would give a much better product, so it's safe to assume they'll start with a clean sheet. Add another problem. Opening these constraints means that significant changes would be required in the car itself instead of the pack. They would have to change the chassis, the pack mounting points, electric wiring and connections, electronics, and more. But Model S is old, its sales dwindling, and it doesn't have too many years ahead of it. It doesn't make sense to change this much in the car without going that extra yard and changing the car's shape and interior, which will quantum leap the sales. By now, it was clear. When Plaid version arrives, it will be on a completely new car. No doubt about it. Actually, it was the other way around. When I saw the Model S mule racing around the track, it was clear to me that it would be a new car. 
The reasoning above just shows why my feeling was definite and not just a guess. But it's not a huge conclusion, really. Anyone can make it. And it wasn't such a big deal anyway. It just meant that the Plaid version won't arrive in the current Model S, just in its replacement, whenever it would arrive. I dropped it at that and didn't think any more about it. Fast forward to two months ago, when news broke about Tesla's secret Project Palladium for models S and X. It was unclear how far-reaching the Palladium update would be, but it was known that it would involve new battery packs and drive units for the upcoming Plaid versions and would possibly have a new body. Articles weren't certain. Some thought it was just for the Plaid versions. Others said it meant a refresh, and some thought it would be new. But the news appeared one day and disappeared the next, with everyone excited about Plaid performance. But otherwise, it's just stuff on a model unimportant to Tesla's future. Despite this, I think this is exciting. I think this is game-changing. I think the new Model S and X will bring billions to Tesla's bottom line. Why doesn't everyone else think so? Why is YouTube only discussing batteries these days, without even mentioning the new reveal? Is this one of the cases where I'm the only one to see things? Or one of those where the things I see just aren't there? Seriously, I'd love your opinion on this. Please let me know in the comments below. So, it's nice to have a new Model S, but why is it so important? I previously ran an analysis that showed that Tesla makes an outstanding 40% gross margin on Model Ys and made in China Model 3s. I'll possibly make a video on this shortly, but for now, please take my word on it being at least very high. Unlike these cars, Model S and X are built on an old, manually intensive, space-consuming, and limited throughput production line. It's fine settling with this if you just continue making the cars on inertia with limited investment. But if Tesla invests in all the changes we described above, they really won't continue building the old way. They'd be much better off going to a completely new production line which uses Model Y production line insights. This means using Mega or Giga castings, which provide much lighter chassis with better dynamics, higher efficiency, longer range, and higher quality. And it also means much lower cost. This will enable Tesla to sell this premium car at a lower price than any of its rivals, yet still enjoy an obscene gross margin. Remember when Lexus arrived and sold higher quality cars at a lower price than its German competitors did at the time? So Lexus broke the market, double this, and then square the result because Tesla will obliterate the luxury car and luxury SUV markets. And with that huge profit margin, these sales will bring enormous profits for Tesla to use for its expansion. Since I realized this, I've been hoarding stocks. And as I said in my previous video, I don't plan to sell anytime soon. Maybe I'm wrong to buy stocks on a moonshot, but everything I saw since then has supported it. For example, this huge press arrived recently at Fremont. Everyone I read claimed that it's the new Giga Press for the Model Y. But really, why? Seriously, I can't get this one. Why does everyone say it's for Model Y? And nobody sees like I do that this press was bought for Models S and X. Maybe I'm missing something, but Fremont already makes Model Ys. And I don't know of an additional line being built there. So why would they need a Giga Press in addition to the Mega Press already there? And in his recent visit to Germany, Elon said that the Berlin Gigafactory will mark a radical redesign of the core technology of building a car, and that it'll be the first time that there's going to be a transformation in the core structural design of the vehicle. Most people agree that the transformation in the core structural design of the vehicle that Elon referred to is gigacasting. But if Berlin is the first, then, until it arrives, Fremont-made cars will only use mega castings and Model Y's mega castings require a smaller press. This picture taken from recent drone footage of Fremont's giant new press shows such castings. Compare their size to that of the truck trailers, and you'll see these castings are huge. They are for models S and X. Let's wrap things up. On battery day, I expect Tesla to reveal a completely new Model S. Not a refreshed car with a plaid version, but a completely new car. I kept silent about it until now so as not to create an Osborne effect with everyone delaying their purchases of Model S and Xs. But since battery day is around, here's what we'll see. The new Model S will have new exterior styling. Based on Frank's track record so far, it should be drop-dead gorgeous. It will have a completely new interior, similar to that of Models 3 and Y, only roomier and more luxurious. 
It'll be built on a new, highly efficient production line using Tesla's most advanced technologies, such as mega castings. It will have a new lightweight chassis with driving dynamics and performance that will put the Taycan, the Lucid Air, and many supercars to shame. It will be inexpensive to build, enabling Tesla to sell it at prices low for its class. Tesla will sell them as fast as they can make them for years to come. Despite the lower price, the cars will have an obscene profit margin. So once production ramps up, Tesla's results will rocket sky high. The car will make Tesla billions of dollars. Billions. Technically, everything I said can be applied to the Model X. Yet till now, I mostly talked about Model S. The reason is that although I am certain about the new Model S arriving, the decision whether to make the X or not is a business one, not technical. Tesla could decide either way. So I can't be sure... But here's what I think. I think that Tesla will make a new Model X, too. But it'll be very different from the current one. I think the new Model X will be to the S like Model Y is to the 3. They will share most components, but the S will be the luxury sedan and the Y a raised luxury SUV. Unfortunately, I don't see the Falcon wings going forward. Again, it's a marketing decision, so maybe they will. But in the name of efficiency, I doubt it. And since the luxury SUV market is red hot, Model Y will make Tesla additional billions, even more than the S. This guess was further supported when the waiting time for both Model S and X jumped last week to eight weeks. Interesting, don't you think? Don't take my word on it, but it seems like anyone buying the S or X now are in for a nice surprise. That's all I have, but before we go, here's a cool moonshot from some time ago. Back in July, when it was announced that Battery Day was delayed to September 22nd, my friend Jack Farrington wrote in Stephen Mark Ryan's Patreon group the following message. There's going to be a Hobbit slash Lord of the Rings theme to Battery Day. Too many coincidences for these not to be Easter eggs. First, Elon was asked his favorite fictional character on Twitter, and he replied, Samwise Gamgee. Later, he replied to a tweet chain featuring a potential origin story of Tolkien's inspiration for the magical ring in the Lord of the Rings series. Finally, Battery Day was moved from September 15th to September 22nd, a.k.a. Hobbit Day, the birthday of Bilbo and Frodo Baggins. Any ideas what this means? I have no idea whether there really is an Easter egg here or just coincidence, but if there is, it means one thing. It's not Lord of the Rings, but Lord of the Ring, the Nurburgring. Considering what we now know, the new lightweight but powerful Model S will drive circles around its competition. So we will possibly soon watch it break the production car record for the track, obliterating the take-ins results. And if Tesla only decides they want to, then Model X will also break the record for SUVs. Rest in peace, ICE cars. Tesla has arrived. That's it, guys. What do you think? Am I right this time or am I wrong? What is true and where did I miss? I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. I read all your comments. Battery day is near, and I'm anxious to see how this moonshot fares. My next video will probably be about Tesla's gross profit. Most automakers make less than 20% per car, yet my analysis shows Tesla making more than double that on their newer cars, and still climbing. I think it would be interesting for all of us if I show you my calculations and hear from you where you think I'm right and where I'm wrong. The end result should be eye-opening. Thanks for watching. If you found this video interesting, please smash that like button to help us start growing the channel. Also, to find out about additional moonshots or deep dives, please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next video. I am connecting the dots and you, my friends, are amazing.